Now I want to show you how we used this ruleware on the architect. First of all, why do we use the architect? The architect simplifies the application of a developer ruleware and makes it more user-friendly. And using the architect, we can automate the decover production. This means that several operators can work in parallel. And the operators do need only a minimal um, experience of image classification. And the most important point is that the manual editing is very easy because it's on the basis of objects and we do not need to delineate the objects. So if we want to transfer a ruleware on the architect, it is necessary to group the ruleware into blocks of actions and this is then called a solution. These blocks of actions are organized in the Definions Architect Library. And if an interpreter wants to work with the Definions Architect, he has to load the library and then execute the solution step by step. And after the execution of each step, the, the results can be checked visually or adjustments can be made. The next slides show you how our architect solution looks like. Well, this is now the architect solution for a rapid forest classification for the GCover project. You see here several thematic blocks which are grouped together and each thematic block can be executed step by step. In the round circles you see um, different colors. They mark fully automated processes, semi-automated processes and processes with no automation. Here a manual interfer interference is possible. I want to show you now, now more in detail what you can do with one block. Though the first block is a decover specific one, we have to, to mask out here water bodies and urban objects because we have got these classifications from decover project partners. Then the next step is the automatic classification of forest and non-forest. This is a semi-automatic process which means here the interpreter can interfere. He has two boxes. One with one box you can um, adjust the segmentation and with the second the classification. With the segmentation the operator can change the object sizes. He can this helps to create more meaningful objects. The objects can be then made bigger or smaller. And the second box named classification, here you see that you can adjust the spectral and textual parameters and this helps to classify more or less forests. Then after this semi-automatic classification step, we have a first forest non-forest mask and block three, the next step would then be to do a manual editing on this forest non-forest mask which is not yet perfect. And on this manual step, we can again adjust the object sizes and we can reclassify the image objects by one click. Here you see the viewer of the architect. On the right hand side, you see two images. One shows you the original image, which is an Iconos image. And in the middle, you see the Iconos image with the classification overlay. And in green, you see the forest layer. On the left hand side you see above the um, single blocks which you can execute and then the user interface for manual editing. And this I will show in more detail. Um, during the manual editing you can first adjust the object sizes and find the um, optimum size of objects for the reclassification. And then you have the box manual classification and here you can do a redesign, um, a re a re um, this redesign of objects. You can um, non-forest objects reclassify to forest and forest objects reclassify to non-forest. On this slide I can show you how the process will work. At first you have to look for areas which have not been classified correctly. You see there is a forest area which is misclassified. It is not yet forest. 
The second step would be that the operator tries to find a suitable segmentation. This means the segments should represent optimally the areas which should be forest as well. When we have an optimal segmentation, then the operator can, by one click, assign these objects to the forest layer. After this step, we have a perfect forest-non-forest -forest class, and then we can execute the automatic classification of the forest classes. Um, here again, this is a semi-automatic process, and we can do adjustments on the segmentation and the classification. Then the filter operations will follow, which are a fully automatic step. And then afterwards, we will detect the currently unstocked objects. This is also a semi-automatic operation. This operation detects potential first objects using topological aspects. The interpreter then has to decide whether this object is really a currently unstocked object or not and has to do the assignment to, for to, to the class or not. The final step will then the quality control and the export of the results. The final control will be the control for object sizes and definitions and the export may be an export to shape file. On this slide, you see now the final result. On the left-hand side, you see the whole patch we have classified with the rule set. And you see in shades of green the forest, and in blue the currently unstocked class. And on the right-hand side, you can see in more detail that the forest classification is quite OK, and also the representation of the forest classes Coniferous and Didis forest, Didis forest is well done. Now I will come to the conclusion. How was, how did we find the work with the architect solution? We can say that the construction of a definience architect solution is very easy, and the architect solution can easily be applied by visual analysts. And an advantage is that several analysts can work in parallel, and they can do minor adjustments by visual minor adjustments. Then the, t the object-oriented approach makes the manual editing more time efficient because the objects already exist. And for the future we expect to reach an even higher level of automation by building a ruleware database that provides solutions for often used types of satellite imageries. Mm -hmm.